what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue with our basic astrology series in conjunctions of planets i made a video recently if you have not watched it then go and watch otherwise you will not understand what i am speaking in this video okay there i have explained what basically the conjunction of planet means and if you are new to the channel then if you have not subscribed then i don't know what you are waiting for please subscribe to it and if you have any questions queries or comments related to anything in astrology please let me know in the comment section i almost answer every comment or every question that has been asked or i try my best to give a response and if you want to do some donations then the link to paypal is there below you can go and donate or else continue watching this video if you want to know more about conjunctions of planets there you go conjunctions of planets part 2 so we discussed on what conjunction is and how to see depending on the nature of the sign that becomes very important and it depends on the nature of the planets also for example if two planets are sitting are they friends or are they not friends and how is the sign supporting that agenda that is how you have to see now what i am going to discuss is there are certain placements for example if jupiter venus are placed together in anybody's horoscope then if the degrees are very close and now i will talk of degrees so just because the two planets are sitting together in a sign doesn't mean that they will always have the effects of the conjunction yes but if the degrees are very close especially if it is within 7 degrees or 8 degrees and if it's more close within 1 degree 3 degree beyond 10 degrees it hardly matters actually this is what i have seen because the they cannot influence each other you see but if they are in same degree or if they are very close then they impact each other very much and if they are in the very in very close degrees then there is situation of planetary war graha yuda which comes because both of them are trying to impact the sign in the same way but that cannot happen because only one planet will have the say when i say only one planet i will explain to you what it means for example if jupiter venus is conjunct very close okay in anybody's chart in any sign in any house suppose it is in a arbitrary sign or it is in a sign where neither jupiter or neither venus is that prominent for example suppose if they are placed in the sign of aquarius then of course venus is much more happier there but uh, again not that great also and jupiter is also not very happy in aquarius suppose we just consider or suppose venus jupiter placed in scorpio or aries these are kind of neutral placements for both of them of course one of them will obviously have an ad added advantage but when i say neutral it means so and so placements not very great for either of them like libra is great for venus and cancer is great for jupiter so not that kind of extreme positions in the horoscope if there are neutral positions or average placements of the uh, two planets then what happens is unless you leave one aspect of one planet you will not get the other planet so i repeat unless you leave one planet or aspects of it you will not obtain the other planet did i sound crazy <laughs> no let me explain suppose jupiter venus is very closely conjunct in any sign then it can happen that if you want to practice spirituality then it might demand you that you let go of things related to venus should i repeat if jupiter venus is conjunct very closely then for spiritual advancement again as i said in the last video jupiter venus is considered to be very great but you have to see the details you just cannot say a combination is great because I, as i said earlier i am again saying now that i have seen people with the worst possible spiritual uh, interests with this combination 
because Venus is driving the conjunction. Then what happens is the person has no higher inquisitiveness. His Jupiter, which is the idea of expansion and growth, is also molded down to things related to Venus. All right. But if it is very closely conjunct, what I have seen is unless one stops, the other cannot start. For example, there is another conjunction, Sun and Saturn, because they are also enemies, just like Jupiter, Venus are enemies. Sun and Saturn are perhaps the deadliest enemies. So then what happens whenever Sun and Saturn are sitting together in any horoscope, in any sign, in any house, then as you know, that is known as Chatra Bandhu Yoga. But what happens is Sun is the father, Saturn is the son. Okay. <laughs> Sun means the child. So what is seen in case of these people is if they stay in the same place with their father or their own son, then one of them either perishes or they cannot advance. I am not talking of spiritual advancement. I am talking of any kind of advancement because they try to outlaw each other because Saturn represents darkness and Sun represents light. So when light and darkness comes together, it's a very tricky situation. So what happens is, suppose a person has Sun and Saturn conjunction in the chart because of the planetary war, if it is very closely conjunct, then Saturn represents denials in life. Okay, denials, delays, disappointment, sorrow, suffering, misery, pain, then the father uh, may have very severe issues in his life. He may be suffering from depression or he may have a difficult life or he may not be there to help the child. Or if everything is fine, then what do we suggest the person? That suppose they are planning to do a business, okay? A person with a Sun-Saturn conjunction in any house, in any sign is planning to do some business. Then what should we suggest the person? Or suppose he has a family business where the he just has to take care of whatever his father has left. Suppose. Then we suggest the person that do not sit in the same place where your father is sitting. Same place means try to go to a new office, try to go to a different place. Otherwise, you will not let the father grow and the father will not let you go. You will keep clashing all the times. Your opinions will be clashing all the times. That is why for Sun and Saturn, it is very much recommended that you maintain a safe distance from your father. Should I repeat? <laughs> you, you should maintain a safe distance from your father. When I say safe distance, I don't mean don't see him, don't call him. I'm not saying that. But if you stay together, I have seen it time and again things will go haywire between you and your father. So the recommendation is that you better do not stay together or even if you're staying together, make sure uh, the, the dealings, the interactions are less as possible. And there should not be any discussions regarding to prominent decisions because whenever it comes to decision making, always there will be trouble. So if you are in a business with your father, family business, for example, like it happens in many places in India, then suppose your father is telling you that maybe we should do this. And then you tell, no, no, I don't think maybe this should not be done. And then there will be a clash. So it is suggested that either you stay in the family business, but you do something of your own where the father doesn't have to say anything. Not that he can never say, but he should not be supervising all the time. Otherwise, uh, that there will be the rift, okay? Or you do something completely of your own, which is not related to the father, because that is perhaps the best solution that can be given. Also, for conjunctions like Moon and Venus, it is suggested that if you are married, suppose you are a man and you have this conjunction, Moon and Venus together, then it is highly recommended that you try to keep a safe distance of your wife and your mother. 
because moon and venus are natural enemies in astrology and recently i made a video on how to solve the conflict between wife and mother-in-law yes mother-in-law means your mother and your wife for her your mother is her mother-in-law so if you watch that video i have explained how bringing jupiter can solve this problem inside what is jupiter jupiter is spirituality because jupiter is the only planet which connects both moon venus in a beautiful way because moon gets exalted in the sign of taurus which is venus taurus is ruled by venus and venus gets exalted in pisces and in cancer which is the own sign of moon jupiter finds its highest exaltation therefore if you have spiritual discussions in your home in your family then probably the clashes between the wife and the mother will be reduced if you have moon and venus conjunction okay now even if you do not have then also you should do that because who knows what happens when yes therefore for co conjunctions like sun and saturn moon and venus these things are recommended another conjunction which is very powerful which is again considered powerful but it depends <laughs> on how powerful it is where it is conjunction can never be good or bad as when i was doing my studies in business domain last year the professor used to tell me that in mba in business there is only one answer it is not good it is not bad what is the answer the answer is it depends should i repeat the answer is it depends it depends if somebody asks you is this good is that is that good you should not say okay yeah that is good that is bad you should always say it depends yes <laughs> so conjunctions are also like that it is not good it is not bad it depends therefore jupiter mercury conjunction if it is in a earth sign it is fabulous for materialistic progress money wealth prosperity all those because jupiter collapses in earth signs especially in signs like taurus and capricorn in virgo it is still relatively not happy but it's it still can tolerate the sign of virgo <laughs> but when it comes to signs like taurus and capricorn things go haywire because in capricorn jupiter gets debilitated which is what the uh capricorn is the outer world it is the house of work name fame status reputation so nobody is concerned about spirituality there everybody is all about me 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 aham janasya moho yam aham mameti that is what is said in bhagavatam that the biggest illusion is me i me and mine so when jupiter goes into capricorn into the outer world and he goes into these people who are fighting for status money reputation name fame post position then jupiter feels my god where i have come that means the person has no spiritual inquisitiveness in such areas provided the other combinations in the chart is supporting and mercury on the other hand collapses in water signs because water signs are signs of moksha of letting go of things of giving up things that is where mercury gets debilitated in the sign of pisces and mercury is fabulous in earth signs so if jupiter mercury conjunction is happening in earth signs like taurus virgo or capricorn especially in virgo that is fabulous because then what happens jupiter is already collapsed so the spiritual acumen is not there so the person he thinks okay let me use my higher beliefs abstract philosophical thinking which is jupiter for money matters so at least for that it is good <laughs> and what if jupiter mercury is conjunct in fire signs or water signs then it is very good for spirituality because then jupiter is already very strong in water signs it has pisces as its own sign scorpio is also the friend sign and cancer is its exaltation sign so jupiter is fabulous in water signs so if jupiter mercury conjunction is in water uh, water signs then mercury loses that materialistic approach to things that is why it gets debilitated in pisces right because pisces is the sign of charity giving up and mercury is money and that is why nobody likes to give money <laughs> 
that is the most difficult charity is to give money that is the most difficult charity if somebody tells you oh can you just help me in wiping this table you'll be like yeah, yeah, yeah i will come and help you can you just help me in cooking something yeah yeah i will do can you just help me in writing this yeah, yeah maybe i can write a paragraph for you but can you give me 10 euros oh no 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 i can't give you <laughs> so whenever it comes to the sign of donations which is pisces mercury feels my god what is the use of me coming here if i have to give everything so the person loses his uh, materialistic intellect which is probably good for spirituality <laughs> so there when mercury is with jupiter in water signs that is fabulous for spirituality because then the person does not think from a mundane angle he does not think from material prosperity only that okay this will give me money should i go here should i go there he is always inquisitive about spirituality which is mind blowing and the same is with uh fire signs where jupiter is also very strong because sagittarius is its mool trigon sign and leo and aries are its friend signs and then we have conjunctions like <laughs> moon and saturn which represents difficulties in perceiving happiness in this world because moon is what what is moon moon is the manas it represents the way we perceive this world it is that element through which consciousness which is pure sattva which is chitta is expressed in this world we feel that is why this ena moon is all about mood and feeling so whatever is happening around us we perceive it through the mind mind is very important that's why it is the moon so when moon and saturn are sitting together this is perhaps the greatest yoga for spirituality the great swami vivekanand had this combination moon and saturn conjunct and this makes a person very much inquisitive about things that are not of this world do you know why because whenever moon and saturn are placed together it is a clear indication by the universe that my dear sir moon represents the people the uh the things of this world that give you happiness yes that's why it represents politics also cancer is the sign of politics also and moon also represents homeland motherland all those activities so when moon is sitting with saturn it can also mean that those things are denied from you <laughs> which means you may not like people very much or people may not like you what does it mean it simply means that you do not like materialistic people you may not like mundane people or materialistic people may not like you and that's what happened so ami vivekananda had a big struggle in his finances getting job and work and all this and then ultimately became a saint which is great he went to chicago and look where he reached because of that conjunction so that is a mind blowing conjunction to have for spirituality and for these people especially techniques like meditation is highly recommended because moon and saturn is known as vis yoga in astrology which means poison poison simply means that whatever this material world is trying to offer to you you somehow cannot get happiness somehow it happens i have seen with these people even if they are married to the most beautiful girl or the most loving girl or the most intelligent girl they will somehow find some fault <laughs> or if it's in a girl's chart i have seen always they will think of the worst case scenarios oh what if that happens why are you thinking unnecessarily but you are thinking right <laughs> so that means even if there's a best case you will still think of the worst case yes even if everything is going great you will still think oh maybe if this goes wrong but why are you thinking which means that internally you are convinced that these things cannot make you happy that is why you have that experience at the back of the mind that is why you are apparently quote and quote the pessimistic people moon saturn people are very pessimistic but what is the meaning of this pessimism the meaning is that from their past lives they have a deep conviction a very strong conviction that things of this world are not going to give them happiness otherwise how the person will be pessimistic 
everybody is getting married everybody is having a career everybody is enjoying life at least apparently but why are these people always miserable always unhappy because they have the experience from the past lives <laughs> and saturn is the yogi so whenever moon and saturn are sitting together it is highly recommended that you do techniques related to yoga meditation spirituality especially reading the holy books and pursuing ancient philosophy sciences like ayurveda astrology then the mind is very peaceful because saturn who signifies all these things <laughs> is sitting with moon so then moon is peaceful because saturn is also peaceful but if you are running after things like venus which is what sexuality women and luxury pleasure all those mundane indulgences venus rahu tait then my god you will be the most miserable person i know in this planet <laughs> with moon saturn if you go into over indulgence you know with things related to venus over indulgence does not mean marriage marriage is the ninth house it is dharma yes that is grihastha ashram i am not talking of marriage here but i hope you understand right over indulgence with women and things like uh, pornography or prostitution if you indulge in all these things or excessive masturbation then things will go haywire for you and your complete mental stability will be in a ride your life will become like a roller coaster so be very careful moon and saturn do what saturn wants do not do what venus wants <laughs> and now uh, so many other conjunctions are there for example sun rahu sun rahu conjunction the person can have a bloated ego he can have a unhealthy conception about himself these people i have seen whenever sun is linked with either rahu or ketu they they actually think that they know themselves <laughs> but actually they don't know <laughs> should i repeat they think that actually they know themselves but actually they don't know they are in a illusion of knowing the self but they do not know actually for example these people i have seen especially sun and rahu conjunction i have seen with these people that you cannot talk about anything which they do not agree with they will simply not let you stay there what these people will do is they will try to prove it to you see why this tendency of proving comes because any planet which is with rahu is under construction because rahu represents those things we which we have not yet achieved which we are yet to achieve in this life so that means we are trying to build on that planet so whenever sun rahu is conjunct it shows that we are trying to build on what is sun what is sun sun is ourselves we ourselves our understanding about our inner nature <laughs> so the person has weird conceptions about oneself he thinks yes maybe i can do that and rahu is that cloud dhua dhua <laughs> so rahu puts the sun in the cloud and that is why it is known as grahan grahan means eclipse means rahu will try to make the sun like rahu which is what rahu thinks i am the boss here i am the only boss sun says i am the boss rahu says i am the only boss here so these people have a lot of uh they have a very bossy nature i have seen they will try to control everybody and because sun is the king and king also has a um, dig degree of control over his citizens but the king is also supposed to be very responsible so sun rahu what happens is the problem with this type of conjunctions is the negative traits of the sun come out very much which is what ego and which are the positive traits of the sun for example to be fixed to be committed to one purpose that is the area where they lack so it is highly recommended that they do worship of lord ram especially sun rahu because sun is represented by lord ram especially then there is moon rahu conjunction my god <laughs> perhaps the most deadliest combination in the horoscope can't get better than this <laughs> moon rahu people are characterized by one word they are the people who get 
obsessed with anything and everything in life moon rahu people what i have seen is either they are fully into something or they are completely outside of it for example moon rahu people if they are doing some job if they like it they will be the best at it if they do not like forget it <laughs> you give them a task and they will not do it they will simply not do it they will not listen to you but if they like it bang mahatma gandhi has moon and rahu conjunction and then you have conjunctions like sun and venus about which i have talked in detail in the earlier video right and sun and venus because sun is a fiery planet and if venus is very close to the sun then venus is con uh, combust that means unless you perfect yourself spiritually or at least you start a new progress which is path of the sun spirituality things related to venus will be denied to you that is why this is one of the very strong indicators of separation after marriage or troubled relationships this does not mean that it will happen but what happens is when a planet is combust the sun is not allowing the rays of the planet to reach you that means you are deficient in those areas and i made a video on conjunction please go and watch it so things related to spirituality will be immense help will be of immense help tremendous help actually especially if in areas of marriage if sun venus are conjunct and sun mercury together is known as buddha aditi yoga again it depends <laughs> mercury has to be relatively far because what happens when a planet is too too much close to the sun it is getting burned by the heat burnt means that doesn't mean the planet is getting burnt but the significations of that planet is not reaching you because sun is telling no till the time i am there i will not let this come so if sun mercury is very close then this can make uh, the person too much egoistic about his or her opinions because whenever mercury's rays are reaching you the sun's fire is also reaching sun is what the ego so these people can be very much opinionated and they can be they 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 can have difficulty in believing to others opinions or even listening i have seen and even if they listen at the end i will say yeah i think you are right but i still don't feel that's the way how it works but if sun mercury is bit far then what happens is the light of the sun uh, reaches mercury so that makes mercury shine more that is why it is known as buddha aditya yoga and especially placement of uh, sun mercury in the trikonas the first fifth and ninth is extremely powerful and this these are the different conjunctions and moon ketu is a difficult conjunction because ketu represents headlessness yes so when moon ketu is together this can show that the um, the conceptions of this world of what gives a person happiness and what doesn't which is moon is very is very unruly it's very it's very unorthodox it is it's confusion actually it's full confusion <laughs> because ketu is headless so when moon is with ketu the person doesn't understand what will give him happiness so what should he do for these people worship of lord krishna is very much recommended or worship of lord ganesh because ganesh represents ketu because ganesh also didn't have the head when his head was cut off by lord shiva then lord vishnu came and he put the uh the elephant head over him so then uh, worship of ganesh is very much recommended and if moon is with ketu or rahu especially or with ketu then also worship of lord krishna is very much recommended because uh, moon is represented by lord krishna and regarding the jupiter mercury which i said that is also fabulous if it is in the trikonas for education that superb super intelligence jupiter mercury because what happens is jupiter delights mercury it will expand the qualities of mercury but only planet who which suffers in this is jupiter because the person can lose all spiritual acumen but if it is in fire sign or water sign bang on high level of spiritual progress and that too if it is in first fifth ninth fabulous especially in the first or ninth mind blowing yoga this is to have and then jupiter moon conjunction is also known as gaja kesari yoga gaja kesari means 
the person is very positive he is very headstrong he is very determined because gaja refers to the elephant and kesri is the lion and both are very good friends so it's very good for positivity but at the same time this yoga is very frequently occurring in charts because jupiter sits in a house and it will aspect moon also in three ways or sometimes it is in kendra then also they consider this so jupiter moon yogas i have seen we better we do not take them very seriously <laughs> i mean we can take them but suppose jupiter and moon are sitting 4 7 or 10 houses away from each other or they are conjunct then yes this gives a uh, power to moon because moon has the drive of jupiter positivity is there but then this is present in so many people because if you take four placements kendra placements from jupiter where moon can be placed considering that yoga is formed then out of 12 four houses is covered which means one third of the people will have gaj kesri yoga which may be but we cannot take that very seriously <laughs> because i have seen uh, gaj kesri yoga to be only working very strong if jupiter and moon are conjunct okay then this yoga is very powerful i have seen because then jupiter is sitting with moon so moon is getting a lot of delight and the traits of moon helps jupiter also which is what bringing emotions into spirituality that is why jupiter gets exalted in the sign of cancer so jupiter moon is one conjunction which is probably the best conjunction to have in a chart probably perhaps even better than jupiter venus provided jupiter venus is in a water sign then perhaps that is the best <laughs> and jupiter sun this is a very powerful yoga but in my experience what i have seen is there's too much bragging with this this yoga jupiter sun because jupiter is expansion growth and uh, that big jupiter is a big planet this you know <laughs> and sun is also the king so it is like the king and the minister jupiter the guru is sitting together it's like a royal entourage which is flowing and which is following so these people are very determined to do the right thing and they are like yes we will do it <laughs> they are very much moral oriented because they are like lord ram because lord ram has jupiter uh aspecting the sun so this this uh, this is a very good combination actually jupiter sun or provided jupiter is not combust and provided uh it is in a good dignity if it is spoiled in signs like libra well then things are not that great for this conjunction and now what happens if uh, suppose four five planets are conjunct and especially there are uh, war zones which are created like sun and saturn will create a war zone mars and saturn will create a war zone sun mars saturn they will also create war zone sun mars saturn rahu they will also create war zone and especially if uh, more than two fiery planets two or more fiery planets are conjunct in a sign then there can be a lot of difficulty in that house for example which are the fiery planets fiery planets are sun mars and ketu right so if sun mars is conjunct in anybody's chart then the person is very headstrong i have seen because sun is the king and mars is the general so the king is with the general so he can order and the general will be like yes sir i will do it it's like that perfect a uh, scenario of the army officer right therefore but the problem is if uh, they are in a fire sign that becomes too much fire <laughs> because it's like two fiery planets and that too in a fire sign is like two way 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 fire <laughs> so if this is happening in kendra 10th house especially fabulous for career the person will be like you, you give him any task and he will go and do it he will finish it he will if it is in the 6th house he will rip his enemies apart completely he will rip them apart and 
if sun mars is there this is known as sangar yoga as i said earlier in the previous video lot of hard work and lot of determination is required to overcome that house where it is and the dispositor is also to be seen and suppose there are three planets like saturn mars and venus then what was the rule which i gave if a bad apple is sitting with a good apple it doesn't improve but it will spoil the good apple also so that means if malefics two or more malefics are sitting with a benefic they will terribly harm the the benefic for example if venus is sitting with mars and saturn then what will happen is venus will be caught in that war between mars saturn so these people i have seen in relationships they can have these traits like big getting violence because mars is violence and saturn represents sorrows tears suffering misery pain things that you don't like so what happens is that becomes a very deadly combination the person is suffering also and then there's violence tears so we need to be very careful when we go for marriage and if we see that these kind of charts have come especially in india if there are uh, there, there's still the concept of arranged marriage very much prominent even today so if you get the chart of a person especially if you're a woman you should be very careful with such combinations if the man has venus mars and saturn together my humble request is please do proper horoscope matching and please do proper analysis of the entire chart and only after that you consider marrying the person otherwise things may not be very great for you and on the other hand if venus and saturn are linked that i have already talked many many times that there can be delays in marriage or till the age of 30 you can have difficult relationships okay and it's good if you can marry somebody who is bit older to you than in age or who is not from a very high level family background or maybe who is not that very popular or who doesn't look that great because what happens with venus saturn is saturn is also the significator of uh, the shudra shudra or i would say uh, step treatment because saturn represents step so it is seen that if saturn is related to the fourth house the person can have step mother like for example or the step mother's role in your family can be uh, in your life can be more prominent than the role of your mother for example lord ram has saturn in the fourth house that's why in his life his step mother kk had a prom- more prominent role than his own mother kaushalya because kk was the one who forced dasharat to tell lord ram that please go to the forest for 14 years anyways diwali is coming i have to make a video on that also <laughs> so whenever uh, saturn is linked that way with venus it can happen that uh, you might get kind of a step treatment from the spouse step treatment means suppose a man has this and he marries a very beautiful queen okay <laughs> then what can happen is she can treat him as if hey, you don't exist for me I, i don't give a damn about you i don't care you know go to hell <laughs> or if a, a girl has this then the same can happen the husband can treat her as if you don't exist for me I, i don't care about you i don't give a damn either you are there because saturn is the yogi he is indifferent he is completely indifferent to who is there or who is not there he doesn't think how will this person feel that is the job of the benefics sensitivity is not the job of malefics sensitivity is the job of benefics like jupiter moon especially so when venus is with saturn then these things can come up so how to reconcile this is marry somebody who is not very flashy who is not very you know who is not like the most beautiful girl of the college or who is not very wealthy like you some kind of traits of saturn has to be there or she may be a bit dark then what happens is she will give you first class treatment not the second hand treatment <laughs> otherwise if she is more 
opulent she is more intelligent she is more attract attractive externally than you then she <coughs> probably will end up giving you a second class treatment <laughs> is there any conjunction remaining my god there are so many conjunctions so about lastly for three four conjunctions for example if sun moon mars and jupiter four are conjunct then fabulous all friends are together <laughs> but there will be a lot of dynamics in that house wherever this is happening and similarly if jupiter uh, so sorry if venus saturn mercury is conjunct fabulous very good for money mind blowing yoga this is for materialistic prosperity perhaps this is the best yoga to have jupiter uh, sorry saturn mercury venus together and if jupiter is also there mind blowing okay that is it from my side conjunctions part 2 and from later on from now i will make videos on individual conjunctions and then we can understand things better there okay that is it from my side if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know in the comment section or if you have any questions about any other videos or if you want me to make a video on any other topic then please let me know okay and do not worry i will make videos on parivartan yoga this yoga that yoga kal sarp yoga and there are so many millions of yogas raj yogas mahapurush yogas all the videos are lined up only thing you need is a bit of patience okay Wish you great luck with the conjunction of planets. Until next time. Bye bye. See you.